program at the Urgency Room in Egan to talk with Dr. Rob Anderson about ticks and Lyme disease. So, good, uh, good topic. It's that yeah, time of the year, and as is. we were just saying before we started taping that, I actually found a tick um, mm -hmm. just last week. So I know it's that time of the year, but yeah. from here to maybe mid-July or so. Yeah, and even sometimes late summer and fall, you'll still see them, and periodically through the summer. And I know the health department was also warning that we may see increased number of mm -hmm. um, disease-carrying ticks this year, yep. this yep. summer here in the Minnesota area and that too. So what are you seeing here at the urgency room? So we're seeing a lot of people coming in with ticks. Um, the ticks are either stuck on them and they can't get them off themselves, or they had one on them and they took it off themselves at home, but they're worried about Lyme disease. So they come in to see us for that. And then how, how do you know like what ticks carry the disease? And, sure. I mean, what do you look for? So the two main ticks that we have in Minnesota is going to be the wood tick and then the deer tick or the black-legged tick. And it's a deer tick that we're worried about, and that's the one that transmits Lyme disease. And are they just smaller or they are smaller. different colors? Yep. So they have some distinguishing patterns to them. Sometimes it can be difficult to evaluate what it is at home. So people will often come into the urgency room for us to take a look at the tick, see if it's a wood tick or a deer tick. And if it's a deer tick and the tick has been on the individual for greater than 24 hours, that's when the risk of developing Lyme disease, exi Lyme disease exists. And that's when we initiate some antibiotics to either prevent somebody from getting Lyme disease or to treat it if it's been a while since the patient was bit by the tick. Yeah, in my case, I mean, I don't even know how long it was there. I just happened to notice it mm -hmm. and got it taken off. But So what, exactly what is Lyme disease? So Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that you get from the tick. Now, it's only the deer tick that carries this bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi, and that's a bacteria that resides in the stomach of the tick. So as a tick is crawling up your leg and finds a place to bite you. That's where it was, I mean, yeah. And it will start sucking the blood. And after about 24 hours or so, the, the tick will suck enough blood from you that it actually regurgitates some of the contents from the stomach back into your bloodstream. Oh, and the bacteria really from the tick stomach goes into your bloodstream, and that's how you get the bacteria that then causes Lyme disease. So how would you know if you've um, been exposed to mm -hmm. Lyme disease? I mean, what are the symptoms? How would you tell? You know, oftentimes the symptoms are a little bit more vague. There's kind of like flu-like symptoms, not feeling well, a little bit run down. A lot of people who get Lyme disease will have a rash called erythema migrans, or it's a bullseye rash. So it's a couple of uh, round circles around a spot in the skin, typically where the tick bit you, but not always. So if you see what we call bullseye rash, that's a classic sign of Lyme disease. And we see people at all three of our facilities in Egan, Woodbury, and Vadness that come in with that bullseye rash and say, I got bit by a tick two weeks ago. I didn't think anything about it because it was so big, so I took it off, but now I have this rash. And it probably was a deer tick, and it had just been on them for so long that it got so engorged that maybe they thought it was a wood tick. Mm -hmm. And then they end up having Lyme. And based upon that rash alone, we'll go ahead and treat people with an antibiotic to treat Lyme disease. And early treatment is really key, I understand. Yeah, right? see, we can also do a prophylactic dose. So if you come in within about 48 to 72 hours of being bit by a tick, if it is a deer tick, we can give you a one-time dose of actually the same antibiotic. It's two pills, 200 milligrams of doxycycline. And that will prevent you from getting the Lyme disease. Are there any potential uh, side effects from the? You know, it is an antibiotic. Okay. Um, all antibiotics, all medicines have different side effects. You can get some super infections of the intestine and, you know, upset stomach. But it's pretty uncommon with this antibiotic. And I think, you know, talking about the risks and benefits of treatment or not, the, the risk of an adverse effect from an antibiotic is pretty low. Compared to, compared to Lyme, Lyme disease, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And if untreated, it mm -hmm. can be very serious. Yep, Lyme if disease. untreated, it can lead to some um, heart problems, um, bad arthritis, and uh, other conditions like that that we get worried about. So what can families and do to protect themselves and their families mm -hmm. from... You know, it's the best thing to do is that preventative measure. So if you're going to be out camping, you know, don't not go outside, but please go outside, enjoy the great outdoors in these few months that we have in Minnesota. But make sure you're wearing, you know, deep products. That does keep mosquitoes and ticks away. Wearing long pants. If you take your pants and actually tuck them into your socks. That's what uh, I didn't do with mine. <laughs> people I might make fun pants. of you, but, you know, 
it'll help prevent the ticks from going onto your skin. If you wear light colored clothing, and why, you'll be able to see the tick better. Oh, I was gonna say, why a light color? Yeah, because then you can see the tick crawling up your leg, but if you're wearing you know, brown or black pants, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to see them. I was wearing black pants yep. you know, a week ago when that happened. There you go. So, and then um, what else, when should they seek emergency care mm -hmm. and come to the urgency room? You know, we get a lot of people that come in and they can't get the tick off. They're worried about it's really embedded in the skin. We, you know, there's old wives' tales out there to take some Vaseline, put on the tick, or you know, take a match and try to burn the tick. But you're more likely to burn yourself and cause problems. So you're best off mm -hmm. using, you know, tweezers if you have one at home. Otherwise, we have a fine forceps here that we can go and just grab the tick as close to the skin, get it at the head, and, and really try to pull the whole thing out. So it's important to get all of it out. Yeah, it's best to try to get all of it out. You know, if there's a tiny little bit, your body will eventually reject that portion of the tick. But um, the important part is to grasp the tick as close to where it's attached to your skin as possible. Because if you grab the body of the tick, you're going to be grabbing the stomach. And you're more likely to squirt that bacteria from the stomach into your bloodstream. Well, in my case, my husband was he was able to get it Good. out with no problems. So Good. I was glad about that. So. Um, any other advice that you would give to our viewers about ticks yeah. and Lyme disease? Yeah, as soon as you're bit by a tick, if you think it's a deer tick, or if you're wondering about it, come in right away. And then it's just a one-time dose of the antibiotic versus going on the medicine for a couple weeks. And we're open from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. at all three of our facilities in Egan, Woodbury, and Vadness Heights. All right, always great advice. Thanks, Dr. Anderson. Thanks, Jody. Thank you. We'll be back with more after this. Did you go tanning? You're getting so tan. We need some sun. Protect yourself. Protect your friends. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. Well, welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Now we tell you about a new kind of pharmacy in Oakdale. Joe Cullen reports. An area married couple are using their strengths to help their patients find unique solutions. Alana and Jason Humphrey are the owners of Mix Pharmacy in Oakdale, which is a compounding pharmacy. Alana is a pharmacist, while Jason works on the business side of things. Alana tells us how she became interested in the compounding side of a pharmacy. You can, you know, meet a patient, talk to them, find out their story, and then make something up the next day in your laboratory and treat them in a way that's customized to their disease state, to their um, history, to their genetics, to whatever the case may be. And that just sounded so appealing to me to see that immediate result. Mix Pharmacy does everything from make pet medications to making prescriptions fit the needs of everyone from kids to adults. The couple bought the pharmacy from CVS to turn it back into an independently run pharmacy, which is what it had been in their Oakdale space for years. Jason tells us how they find their customers. A lot of times it's word of mouth. You know, if a patient has a good experience here, they'll tell their friends and family about us. A lot of times too, it's the doctor. So the doctor might know of us because we, they use us for problem solving. Um, we're not typically the place you'd come for your first prescription, um, but if you had an issue with what you might get at a different pharmacy, we could be your option to help with that issue. Alana gives us an example of a type of custom medication mixed pharmacy may be called upon to do. For example, we uh, do pain compounding. So I'll have a patient call me up and say, uh, for example, I was prescribed Vicodin for um, arthritis and I'm afraid to take it. I'm afraid of the side effects. I'm afraid of becoming addicted to it. Um, can you help me? And sure, we can you know, look at medications that work together, put a bunch of medications together in one cream and have that patient use that and not have to be on opioid medications and find from them, you know, they get that pain relief that they need without any of that risk of side effects. It's so rewarding. <laughs> Jason tells us how business is going so far. I'd love to, to see us continue to grow and expand. I mean, we've got a great service that we provide to our patients. We'd love to help more people find out about it. I think that's the biggest challenge is not enough patients know about it and there's just not a lot of education on the topic. Mix Pharmacy is located on Helmo Avenue in Oakdale. They ship their custom medications to their patients who aren't able to stop into their location. For more information, visit them at Mix Pharmacy. Dot com. Joining us now is Jennifer Drake, a local dietitian, to tell us about, um, there were some new studies that came out talking about um, potential harm from eating 
processed foods, and then also you're going to talk about the benefits, health benefits of eating fresh fruits, and also that new trend of home delivered meals. So glad to have you with us. Thank you, Jody. So first of all, there was a report. I think it was the the um, British Medical mm -hmm. um, Journal that came out saying a couple of studies. These weren't cause and effect, but they were studies right. that showed that people that tend to eat ultra high um, processed foods and meats in particular, that they had a, tend to have a higher risk of heart disease and other diseases. And then I think also they said um, there could be also, um, they may more likely have diabetes right. or um, be um, obese and things like that. So, right, so the BMJ did a wonderful cohort, cohort study. It was a huge study actually, um, where they used the NOVA guidelines. And the NOVA guidelines are basically the four groupings in which we place food as processed, clean, processed, highly processed, ultra processed. Okay. So, um, Honestly, like as as a dietitian, this doesn't surprise me any of these fi findings. Like I just feel like finally we're getting the science behind it. But yes, yeah, so what they had found was particularly breast cancer um, and IBS, breast other cancer. breast cancer and gastrointestinal disorders were highly linked to high consumption of ultra processed foods. So when you said the three different kinds, can you kind of tell us what are those three different sure. kinds? Sure. I think so, people are surprised at what are right. considered processed foods. So I, I think what we we actually have like the min most minimally processed foods are what we consider not even processed at all. They're just things that you add sugar to or you uh, or not salt to uh, cure them um, mildly. It, but the difference between the minimally processed and the ultra processed is that there's nothing nutritionally added to the ultra processed food. It is all chemicals. So when you look at an ingredient and list, all those things that you can't even. Pronounce. I always tell people magic five. If there are more than five things that you cannot pronounce, put it right back. Oh, that's good advice. Yeah, I mean, food food is not meant. Real food is not meant to live on a shelf for 14 years and taste the same as it did on day one as it does on the 14th year. And so that's how we classify it. Um, you know, to put it to put it easy, we always tell people the Mediterranean diet is the best. Mm -hmm. um, shop the perimeter of the aisle, like that's where you know you don't have to do any kind of thinking and that's where you know you're not going to get the processed foods. But uh, yeah, and actually there's another, there was another article that I read recently in Cell Metabolism that they did a really good comparison of people who ate these highly processed, ultra processed foods and also ate these other foods that we would never consider processed. They were things like turkey bacon, canned chicken, um, some of your different milks that are pasteurized and ultra pasteurized. They gave the study participants the enough liberty to eat as much as they wanted, but one group had minimally to zero processed foods and the other group had the ultra processed healthier foods that they thought were healthy. They ate as much as they wanted and the calories, everything was the same and that the highly ultra processed group still gained five pounds. Really? Yes. So wow. those are things, and they're doing, I think the, the, um, the cohort in Europe is actually taking on as their next project, those, those actual additives that are in, the chemicals that are in the food, what causes them to have such a negative effect? Because we don't really have a lot of data on that. There's just, there's a lot of convolution, there's big food, there's so much money involved uh -huh. in it. There's not enough studies to look at like what the actual ingredient is and why it does what it does, but it happens. And we're talking, the whole gamut of foods. Yes. I mean, I, I'm thinking from cereals to yogurts. And yes. Like well, that. that was yeah. That was one of um, that was actually one of the participants that ate the ultra processed food. We're eating sweetened yogurts. I mean, you go into any grocery store, the yogurt section is like the biggest section of the dairy section. It is. Um, but we we all know that sugar is the biggest problem, and so unfortunately, that's the biggest processed ingredient that goes into the most of the food that we eat. So. Collectively, we know that's probably not a good idea to keep doing. We don't have it in our United States gui dietary guidelines. They do in Brazil now, and they are adding them in Fr France as one of their number one guidelines. They are. Mm -hmm. Do you think no that'll change in this country? It. I, I mean, I hope as as a health advocate that that does happen, but. Yeah. I mean, I guess you just never know. What about frozen foods? They've come a long way. I mean, like that's that's another thing. Like, Back to the old dinner, or the <laughs> packaged things that first came out. Uh, there you know? are companies that have actually taken some responsibility and tried to cut back on their additives, and they do market it that way. But it really it really becomes the responsibility of the consumer to look at the ingredients. If it just says frozen blueberries, yeah, right? That's if there's okay. five things and that's what's in it, you're good. Canned food, same thing. They've come a long way with like reducing the oh amount my of gosh, sodium. Oops. 
um, a lot of companies have taken that responsibility. And that's where it needs to start with the companies. But like I said, if there's any confusion, just go to the outer perimeter, then you're safe, except for the big yogurt. It seems like the soft water um, or soft drink companies too are promoting, at least I've been seeing that, right. less sugar, smaller content. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the mega sizes are what really totally. do everybody in, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's too much. And um, for my, our company, Libby's in my company, Weeknight Kitchen, um, what we try to do is make sure we produce things from scratch that families will love in the appropriate portion size. Oh. So we tend to make things, like I said, that are traditional and, you know, they might not fall in the, you know, this, the fad diet healthy category, but we give them, we produce them in such a way with the most wholesome ingredients in the right portion size. This is how much you're supposed to eat at dinner, not this much. Um, and yeah. these are smell, smells good yes. here, but we'll get to that in just a second. Yeah. But tell us about um, week, Weeknight, weeknight um, kitchen. kitchen and what's that all about and... You know, how does that work? So my partner Libby Mahaffey and I came up with this concept about three years ago now where we, um, like we were saying before, we're just sitting there with our kids one day deciding, realizing how difficult it was for two income families to get it all together, come home, feed your the kids. The last thing you want to do, yeah. Right. You know, my sister and her husband are double income. They're con they have three kids. They're constantly on the go. You know, it would not be surprising to them to stop at McDonald's or something like that on the way home. And we thought we could make you could make dinner yourself for less money. That's way more healthy. And so we just kind of started doing it out of our neighborhoods just to see if we could make a go of this. If it was even something that people would be interested in. And, and so it, that was in the South St. Paul area. Then? So um, Libby lives in Invergrove Heights. Uh -huh. I live in Prior Lake. Okay. Um, but yes, so we tried to do the South Metro and the East Metro, kind of just to see if it would, if it had any momentum, and it did. So we decided to take the next step and start renting a kitchen. Just to, and it's just Libby, myself, and her mother cooking, and so we um, we we kind of just figured things out as we went. But we started developing recipes that we knew people liked, that families liked. Um, and things using very wholesome, healthy ingredients. Um, we try to buy local whenever possible. Um, we try to do just very simple things um, that kids would love, adults would love, and that are very nutritious. And so these are delivered or they pick them up or how does that work? So our concept is kind of different. So we're, we, we don't consider ourselves a meal kit because you don't have to cook anything. Everything is prepared for you. It comes hot and ready to eat, hot and homemade. Um, but what we've done is we've kind of recruited some moms in the area. We'd actually, we actually have a high school student that does it too, who um, have become kitchenettes. And there are independent contractors who allow their residents to be a pickup location. And what we do is um, all the commerce is done through our website. You scroll down to order and you find a place that's near your home. You click on it and it directs you to the sign up link. And you choose the meals you want and pay for them online, and then know that on Tuesday at 4.30, you go to Kate's house to pick up your meal. Um, Kate has it every Tuesday. Um, Jody has it every Wednesday <laughs> in a different part of the city. And we also have some corporate locations that act as pickup locations too for their employees when they leave. And actually, a lot of our marketing when we were trying to recruit different pickup locations, when we, when we met with um, HR and different corporations, we, we kind of market it as a stress relief health benefit for employees. Wow, yeah, yeah because, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, compo components of health are very subjective. And so when you reduce the amount of stress and let your, after working all day and, ha and have a place for your family to come and eat something nutritious and sit down together and re reconnect, um, it adds another health, another layer of health to your employees. So we've had a lot of companies very interested in that and some have signed on as pickup locations for their employees. It's really good. And you said that you prepare it all at your own kitchen then you have? Right, so we had rented a space in South St. Paul and they had sold their building. So we, Libby and I decided to jump off the cliff <laughs> and build out our own kitchen, um, which is still in South St. Paul. Um, we're located in the Fifth Avenue Plaza, right off of Fifth Avenue in South St. Paul up on top of the hill. Um, it's a wonderful location, and we're super excited to work there. So, yeah, we go in on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursday mornings, and we look at our account for the day, and we just start creating meals for that day. Then we finish everything by 3.30 for our kitchenettes to pick up, um, and everyone has dinner before 4.30, between 4.30 and 6. Wow. Yeah, that's, it's awesome. That's awesome. It's, it's 
taking that trend of a lot of right. home um, delivered meals and just yeah. making it your own special kind as well. Well, it's so interesting. We were talking about this the other night. It, I mean, you really don't have to leave your house for anything anymore. I mean, between DoorDash, oh my gosh, all the deliveries. Yeah. I mean, Shipped and Instacart. It's just you know, that's just where things are trending nowadays. And so to add this component, which right now isn't replicated anywhere that we can find, because we've bought all the meal kits, we've tried them all to see how good they are and what, you know, what they're lacking. I feel like what we do, what Libby and I do and her mom, is we create something that you don't, you really don't have to do anything. You just can eat it together. Yeah, because the, the other ones, you most of them you have to prepare yeah. yourself then. But I mean, they have all their ingredients, which is an advantage too. So um, why don't you tell us what you have here with So this today. is this week's menu. So the other um, part of what we do is every week our menu changes. So we have a cycle of usually 12 to 16 weeks where you can look at the menu and decide, you know, I want to opt in this week. I don't want this one. I want that one, whatever. But it's the same thing for the whole week. So Tuesday, our Tuesday pickup locations, um, will have the same thing as Wednesdays and Thursdays, basically. This week, we are featuring Mediterranean grilled chicken pitas with rice pilaf. They look great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, like I said before, we make everything in the kitchen that morning. So we hurried up and made this for you guys today. So <laughs> well, this is the you. rice pilaf. <laughs> this is our grilled chicken. That our viewers can I know, have a taste. I know, it smells so good. Or smell. I know. It, and actually, you know, it's wonderful because we have been doing it for a couple of years now. We we actually have it down. We know what we're doing. We know how long it's going to take. We know we're not going to mess anything up, which, you know, wasn't the case when we started. So, yeah, and <laughs> these are the, um, this is what you use to make your pita. So there's the cucumbers, the tomatoes, red onions, and the homemade tatsiki that we made ourselves yesterday. Oh. So, yeah, we try it as much as we can do. And you make the tortillas then too? We don't. Okay. That's the caveat. So there are some things on um, our menu that obviously we're not making from scratch. We're not rolling out pierogies and we're not rolling out ravioli. But um, like Libby and I always talk about, we... We prefer to kind of live in the 80-20 lifestyle where moderation is the key to health. So obviously you're not going to have chicken Alfredo every single day, every week. Oh my week. gosh, yeah. But we do offer it once a month, once every couple weeks, I should say, once a cycle. I've always heard from other dietitians, there's no bad food. There's no bad food. You just yes. have to know You just have to know when to what, say when, and you have to be comfortable with not punishing yourself. For indulging every once in a while because you only you know live once and this is open to anyone in the twin cities right so what you do is you go to our website which is www.weeknightkitchen.com and you go up to the tab that says order or you could read our story which is also awesome <laughs> and then you go to order and you scroll down through our different days and locations so you're like oh well i live by katie i'm gonna pick it up at katie's you don't have to know katie you just click on her order link and then sign up for your meal. And then you just pick it up at her house on the designated day. So it's really quite easy and it's it's spreading, which is great. We have locations now um, in the East Metro in Egan. We have a Woodbury location. We have our South St. Paul locations, Invergrove Heights, Prior Lake. We have a couple more in Savage. We have um, a Dyna. We have two in a Dyna, one we in the Prairie. We need to get some up here in the I White know, Bear area. I know. We don't have the north. I know. So, but we're constantly trying to work toward that goal. Like, that is our goal. We want to spread um, as far as we can throughout the metro. And the cost comparable or? $35 plus tax or 40 depending on the meat or the protein that, we're ha that we are serving. So we're trying to, um, you know, accommodate everything and keep it a low, as low as we can. Um, we've done a ton of market research. We've actually like gone to McDonald's one night with all our kids just to see how much it would cost. And we always come in really well under budget. And you're you're paying for really healthy food. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. That is the key. Healthy foods, fresh foods. Anything else about healthy eating? What are the benefits of eating? fresh, healthy foods. Well, I, you know, I could, go, I literally could go on forever about this. Yeah. This is such I a... Think we have about five minutes or four <laughs> minutes left, but... I, um, you know, I grew up in an Italian family. We ate fresh food like all myself. the time. Yes. And I mean, you know how it is. You just, I don't, I, people laugh at me because I've never even had a slice of bologna in my entire life. Oh, I don't eat them. No. I don't even really know if I've ever had margarine, to be honest with you. I don't, we just never ate that way. Um, and as a dietitian, I... My beginning jobs, early in my career, I worked in clinical dietetics, and it's been 23 years. I know it hasn't been like overnight, but just the the trend of illness that has was once like a you know a later in life diabetes was a later in life thing. Um, now, if they've lived that long, right? And now, and you know, my like latter years in my clinical positions, it was kids and 20 year olds, and it was just kind of like 
what is what is happening here was very disillusioning. And the last thing that anybody wanted to hear leaving the hospital was, sorry you're sick and here's all the things you can't eat. And so I just feel like the trend was the pill is easier than learning and mm -hmm. I just think people have gotten away from it and what we need are more studies like the ones we talked about that are really throwing it in front of the consumer's face that it, this this is up to you 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 have to understand this and another thing is I don't think people understand um, how harmful chemicals actually are to our bodies because you're not picking up a box of cereal thinking it, there's no warning on it like cigarettes I mean, you just you just don't think that way. It's mm -hmm. just not proposed that way. It's not marketed that way. But um, I think that people are becoming full circle. I mean, it's not super cheap to eat. No, it's fresh. not. It's cheaper to it's very, buy the right. snack foods and exactly. And it is fast food. Way less expensive to eat the highly ultra processed foods, but you're going to pay on the back end whether that's a shorter lifespan or medical bills mm -hmm. or just the inability to enjoy your quality of life. Um, and those are things that I, I wish we could probably, we could project a little bit better in our society right now. So we're going into the summer months here. Yes. Any tips for our viewers on how to eat healthy during the summer months? I'm a big time grill fan. Grilling is the best. You can really do anything. I mean, and if you do like go at the big box stores to buy bulk anything, buy bulk protein. I mean, people have Instapots now. I love my Instapot. You can literally be like, shoot, I didn't defrost the chicken breast, and throw it in your Instapot, and 30 minutes later, you can shred your chicken. Good I tip. mean, honestly, it's the best. We are living in such a great day and age with all the different gadgets that you can use to create healthy food. I love all the fresh fruits and vegetables we get. Tons. Now. I mean, growing up, you right. could only get them in the summer living right. in the northern states. Exactly. And, but now it's pretty much year round. And, and organic, I mean, when, I mean, if you know what you're looking for and, you know, I, I try to use so social you media organic tools. organic then? Orga I try as much as possible. I, like, I try to follow the Clean 15 um, and the Dirty Dozen. And can you just tell our viewers exactly what those are? Oh, right. I knew you were going to ask me this. <laughs> <laughs> you can look it up. <laughs> but I would say, honestly, anything that's highly water content, like your celery, your green peppers, strawberries, things that have a big time water content, those are usually the dirtiest ones. Anything with a thick skin on it, they're the better ones. So, you know, you're not going to worry about oranges, you're not going to worry about bananas, things like that. But you're going to worry about the high water-based vegetables. But you can you, you can find them online. And there's some there's an app. I have it on my phone. And then for cleaning those vegetables and fruits, um, what do you recommend? I, you know, I just, I, I personally rinse. You could use a fruit wash or a vegetable wash. Um, but I cook most just of my vegetables, unless I'm doing a salad, then I wash it. Um, you can, if they're highly waxy and you're using the skin, you're eating it, dunk it in the hottest water you possibly can. You could do that with apples. You could do it with cucumbers, anything with a skin with wax. With um, wax. Yeah. Okay, I hadn't thought about yeah. that. Yeah. But honestly, I mean, summer's the best time to eat healthy. You have so many things. And we're so lucky. We have great farmer's markets. And Absolutely. there's so much produce available. It's wonderful. It's very refreshing. Well, Jen, final comments for our viewers and uh, takeaway information for them. This is great. Um, I hope that everyone does... Uh, start to understand the importance of eating cleaner and that's a big buzzword it's huge and i feel like this is going to be kind of the year where we start talking more about the benefits of eating things that are clean and unprocessed um, for our overall health and i wish everyone luck and check out weeknight kitchen well it was a pleasure to have you yeah, on the show i want to have come back and I'd love to, to share talk about some other yeah, tips and things. Thanks. So, thank you and good luck this does really does smell good thank you yeah Thank you, and we'd like to thank you for joining us and hope you'll join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.